Hello, and welcome to our study of Romeo and Juliet. In this particular act, Act 5, we see our story coming to an end. We also will encounter the climax of our story. This is what we consider to be the turning point or the most critical point of the story. It's this part of the story that you're sitting at the edge of the seat thinking, what will happen next? And we will encounter that in this act. If you guys recall, in the last act, Juliet has faked her own death with the help of Friar Lawrence, and now all of her family thinks that she's dead and will bury her. This is really a really sad thing, if you think about it, thinking that Juliet is dead, their only child. Her parents must be devastated. And yet Juliet did this to be with Romeo, so it just goes to show to the, the extreme she's willing to take to be with someone that she loves. We know that this sleeping potion that she's taken will make it appear that she's dead, but then she'll wake up in the tomb of her family, which could be quite problematic if you think about who was recently put in there that she's related to. That's right, in Act 3, Romeo kills her cousin Tybalt, and so we know that Tybalt's laying in the tomb, and he's not having been in there that long, but long enough to start decomposing. So that would be kind of a frightful sight to wake up to seeing your dead family members, your dead cousin that you grew up with, you know, lying by you. Now in this image, you see what uh, a tomb in Verona may have looked like. And Juliet's family may have had one similar to this. Uh, it might be like this is the marker and then, you know, they're buried underneath or buried behind it or buried within it. And there'd be platforms that they'd lay out on to um, to decompose. So let's go ahead and listen in to Act 5, Scene 1. This takes place in Mantua in the street. And if you recall, Romeo has been banished to Mantua. He cannot return back to Verona unless he wants to be put back to death. And that would be kind of a tragic ending for Romeo. And so let's hear what Romeo has to say. Act 5, Scene 1, Mantua, a street. Enter Romeo. If I may trust the flattering eye of sleep, my dreams presage some joyful news at hand. My bosom's lord sits lightly in his throne, and all this day an unaccustomed spirit lifts me above the ground with cheerful thoughts. I dreamt my lady came and found me dead. Strange dream that gives a dead man leave to think, and breathed such life with kisses in my lips that I revived and was an emperor. Ah, me! How sweet is love itself possessed when but love's shadows are so rich in joy. Enter, Balthazar. News from Verona. How now, Balthazar? Dost thou not bring me letters from the friar? How doth my lady? Is my father well? How fares my Juliet? That I ask again, for nothing can be ill if she be well. Then she is well, and nothing can be ill. Her body sleeps in Capel's monument, and her immortal part with angels lives. I saw her laid low in her kindred's vault, and presently took post to tell it you. Oh, pardon me for bringing these ill news, since you did leave it for my office, sir. Is it even so? Then I defy you, stars. Thou know'st my lodging. Get me ink and paper and hire post-horses. I will hence to-night. I do beseech you, sir. Have patience. Your looks are pale and wild and do import some misadventure. Tush, thou art deceived. Leave me and do the thing I bid thee do. Hast thou no letters to me from the friar? No, my good lord. <coughs> No matter. Let thee gone and hire those horses. I'll be with thee straight. Exit, Balthazar. Well, Juliet, I will lie with thee tonight. Let's see for means. O oh, mischief, thou art swift to enter in the thoughts of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary, and hereabouts he dwells, which late I noted in tattered weeds with overwhelming brows, culling of simples, Meagre were his looks, sharp misery had worn him to the bones, 
and in his needy shop a tortoise hung, an alligator stuffed, and other skins of ill-shaped fishes, and about his shelves a beggarly account of empty boxes, green earthen pots, bladders and musty seeds, remnants of pack-thread and old cakes of roses, were thinly scattered to make up a show. Noting this penury, to myself I said, and if a man did need a poison now, who sail is present death in Mantua, here lives a caitiff wretch would sell it him. Now this same thought did but forerun my need, and this same needy man must sell it me. As I remember, this should be the house, being holiday the beggar's shop is shut. What ho, apothecary! Enter, apothecary. Who? Let's pause really quick. So, uh, problem here, if you guys recall, Friar Lawrence is supposed to send a letter saying, hey, guess what, Juliet's dead, but she's not really dead, and you're supposed to go meet her in the tomb and welcome her out of her slumber. Well, clearly, Romeo receives word from Balthazar, his manservant, that Juliet is dead, and this is really tragic. Romeo obviously thinks that Julia is really dead. So there has been some miscommunication with the message that Friar Lawrence sent. And so he says, oh, I defy you stars, which is also a very famous line from Romeo. And also, again, kind of alluding to this star-crossed lovers concept that we have seen throughout this play. Also, Balthasar gives some good advice. He says, I do beseech you, sir, have some patience. You, your looks are pale and wild and do import some misadventure. He's saying, please just chill out. Don't rush off to do something foolish and careless. And do you think this is good advice? Because I sure do. But knowing Romeo and his actions and how he's presented himself throughout the entire play... Do you think that he's going to go moderately and slow and, and think of the consequences of his actions? Of course not. Romeo is so rash. Everything he's done thus far has been rash. He has fallen in love with Juliet in a very rash manner. He's married her almost instantly. He killed Tybalt without even thinking about the consequences and the impact it could have on Juliet in his life. And so him to do something rash now is not out of the picture and is almost to be expected, really. All right, let's continue to listen in because he is going to a apothecary, which if you guys were, uh, read here, he talks about all the things that are in the apothecary shop. Now, it's always interesting, my gamers students always know what apothecaries are because this is a character that shows up in video games a lot, but an apothecary is someone who, uh, he, who can uh, give medicines and make potions and, and heal and offer poisons to, and there's someone who's really knowledgeable about the elements and how they can affect people and they would sell their remedies to um, different people back in the day. Think of them as like an old time uh, an old time uh, per person who gives out prescriptions, a pharmacist. So let's also look at this long soliloquy soliloquy that Romeo gives out. He talks about things that are hanging in this apothecary shop, like the tortoise or the alligator and other skins of ill-shaped fishes. Now, I mean, it is kind of still exotic to have a stuffed alligator hanging in your house or hanging in your store, but it's also not impossible in this day and age. You could probably get on eBay and get about just any animal that's stuffed mailed to your house. However, this would have been extremely uh, rare back in Romeo's time because think everything has to come over on a ship and it would have been expensive and few people would have had access to it. So the fact that he kind of describes this shop really paints this picture of this like foreign um, exotic looking space in 
the time and place in which Romeo lives. And the audience probably would have been imagining it too. So, here comes the apothecary. Let's listen in. Call so loud. Come hither, man. I see that thou art poor. Hold. There is forty ducats. Let me have a dram of poison. Such soon speeding gear as will disperse itself through all the veins that the life weary take may fall dead, and that the trunk may be discharged of breath as violently as hasty powder fired doth hurry from the fatal cannon's womb. Such mortal drugs I have, but Mantua's law is death to any he that utters them. Art thou so bare and full of wretchedness and fierce to die? Famine is in thy cheeks, need and oppression starveth in thine eyes, contempt and beggary hangs upon thy back. The world is not thy friend, nor the world's law. The world affords no law to make thee rich. Then be not poor, but break it and take this. My poverty, but not my will, consents. I pay thy poverty and not thy will. Put this in any liquid thing you will, and drink it off. And if you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. There is thy gold. Worse poison to men's souls, doing more murders in this loathsome world than these poor compounds that thou mayst not sell. I sell thee poison. Thou hast sold me none. Farewell. Buy food and get thyself in flesh. Come, cordial and not poison. Go with me to Juliet's grave. For there must I use thee. Excellent. Ooh. So, again, a really speedy scene in which Romeo rushes off to uh, go see uh, this apothecary. And the apothecary, he asks of the apothecary to give him some drugs that will kill him. A poison, essentially. A dram of poison. And he says, give me something that will, you know kill off somebody right away and the apothecary is like no way i have these drugs but if i sell them mantua's law says that it's death to anyone that utters them well interestingly enough romeo is able to bribe him by saying guess what i see that thou art so bare and full of wretchedness and fearest to die. Famine is in thy cheeks, need and oppression starveth in thine eye. Contempt and beggary hangs upon thy back. The world is not thy friend or the world's law. The world affords no law to make thee rich. And be not poor and break this and take this. So he's saying, you look so poor, like you're hungry. I can tell you're starving. Take this money and you know, do with it what you will, but give me my poison. And the apothecary says, my poverty, but not my will consents, which is actually another really kind of sad idea because he's saying, I'm so poor, I'm going to sell this to you. Not because I think it's the right thing to do, but because I'm poor. And then Romeo says, I pay thy poverty and not thy will. The apothecary gives him directions. He says, put this in any liquid thing that you will and drink it off. And if you have the strength of 20 men, it would dispatch you straight. It's a really poisonous uh, substance if it can kill 20 men like that. Also, Romeo says, there is thy gold, worse poison to men's souls, doing more murders in this loathsome world than these poor compounds that thou mayest not sell. Interestingly enough, Romeo saying, you know, uh, here's the gold and really this is the real poison. It does more murders than this poison that you're selling me. Which, honestly, I mean, Romeo's not wrong. If you look at why people murder and all these things, it's really, a lot of times, money-oriented. And so, Romeo is not incorrect in saying that it is uh, money that motivates all this crime and sadness and death. Alright, so, he's gonna, we can assume that he's going to drink this off, because he's rushing to Juliet's grave, and he says, for there I must use thee, he's He's going to drink this poison off right away. I mean, immediately. He hears about it from Balthazar, goes straight to the apothecary, buys the poison, is going straight to Julia's grave, and is going to kill himself. This is uh, another example of rushed thinking that is just going to be destructive to him and everyone else around him. If Romeo would just slow down, and if you can take away any theme from this, take away the idea of 
making rash decisions is not a good plan. Sometimes you just got to think about stuff and say, "Hmm, let me take a minute. But Romeo is not having that. All right. Well, I hope this was helpful for you. And I hope you tune in for scene two and get to hear what happens next. All right. Thanks again. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye.